All right, Shalom. First, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Chakodash, the honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. Um, uh, I want to do this video, okay? Um, just as you can see in the title, okay, tracing or how to uh trace or find out, you know, um, linking the the so-called Caucasian race or the so-called white race, all right, with the uh, Edomites of the Bible. OK, and so we're going to use the scriptures. All right. To pinpoint and identify who they are today. And I have a couple of precepts lined up here, you know, so those who I just go through it and explain it. And you can see that we're not just making things up. You know, you have people that say that the Edomites have done away with and all that. But after after we go through it and you see how they they are. All right. The so-called Caucasians or, you know, so-called white race today. You'll understand why, you know, we refer to them as Edomites, because according to the Bible, they 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 go back to Esau, Edom. All right. So we're going to start off with this. This is Genesis chapter 36, verse one. And this is also good knowledge to have. All right. In case you are you are approached with that kind of question. All right. Knowing how to, you know, link it. All right. Or how to explain it with the precepts, you know, so you're not just parroting or you're not just saying it, but you know how to prove it. All right, so this is Genesis chapter 36, verse 1. Now, these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Okay, so Esau, Edom. All right, Esau is the man, Edom is the nation. Okay, because they came from, from Esau. All right, Jake, just like Jacob, which, whose name got changed to Israel, all right, is, is, is our forefather. All right, and then you have the Israelites, or the nation of Israel. All right, so you have the Edomites that come from who? Esau. Okay, so I'm going to jump down here. Actually, I'll read verse 2 and then I'll jump down. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Elon, and the Hittite, and Ahilobama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. And I'm going to jump down to verse 12. And Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. All right. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. OK, so Amalek is who the son of um, of uh, Eliphaz, who is the son of Esau, meaning Al Amalek, the man Amalek is, is, a, is the grandson of Esau. OK, now from these men, you have nations, their descendants. So anybody who is a descendant of Amalek is a descendant of Esau, meaning they would be an Edomite. OK, so now let's let's travel on here. All right. This is uh first Samuel, chapter 15, verse eight. It says, and he took. Uh, matter of fact, I'll start at, uh, uh da, 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 da. I'll start at verse seven, uh, first Samuel 15 and seven, just to get to the point. And Saul took, uh, and Saul smote the, uh, Amalekites from Havilah on, until thou comest to shore that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites alive utter, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Okay. So Saul's commandment. What they told what the Lord told Saul through the prophet Samuel was that Saul was to go and slay all the Amalekites, all right, in, in that area, okay, with the sword, their their sheep, their cattle, everything. All right. However, due to Saul's disobedience, he saved the king Agag alive. All right. Now keep in mind, of course, in a time like this, obviously not all the Amalekites, all right, in the world were destroyed. All right, because people migrate. So not you in that specific area. Where it's predominantly Amalek, all right, or Edomites, doesn't mean that all the Edomites in existence were in that specific area at that time, all right? And it doesn't mean that, hey, you might have had some of them that might have fled or might not, might not have been at that specific area at that, that point in time. Nonetheless, you had Amalekites, Amalekites that are still alive after this, this event took place. However, that's not the point right now. The point is, it says here, and he, verse 8, and he took Agag the king of the Amalekites alive. All right. So Agag was what? He was an Amalekite. Okay. And that is important because now we know who Amalek was what? The grandson of Esau. So if you're an Amalekite, that means what? You're a descendant of Esau, meaning you go back to Esau, AKA you are an Edomite. Okay. So now let's jump on. So this happened in the old Testament. Okay. But let's, let's move on and see. Okay, showing you also that, you know, not all the Amalekites got destroyed because now we're going to jump. This is uh, Esther, all right, chapter 3, verse 1. 
Okay. Now, mind you, the time of um Samuel, all right, that's that's boy, that's during the time of war. Uh that's even before David. Okay. When Saul got this commandment. That's even before David. All right. And now you had David, and then you had uh, uh, uh um the nation got split. And then you had the Assyrians and then the Babylonians, and now we're in the Persian captivity. So right now, what we have going on in the time of Esther, we're around what, like the the, the four four hundred BC area. So that's a good long time. Okay. So it says after these things did King Ahasuerus, all right, also known in history as Xerxes the first, all right. Um, after all these things did King Ahasuerus or Xerxes promote Haman. The son of Hamadatha, the Ag uh, Agagite, all right, or Agagite, whatever you want to call it, and advanced him and set his seat above all the prin princes that were with him, all right. So within the king's court, you had Haman, who was the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite. Now, when you look up the word, you notice how these every nation, all right, when you have a descendant from a nation, it'll the the ending will be ite. Israelite, Edomite, Elamite, Asherite, you know, Ammonite, Moabite, because the, the, the suffix ite means what? A people of, okay, or a descendant of. Actually, let me see uh, if I can get that here in the online etymology. Ite. Is it here? Okay, all right. Right. Um, it word forming element indicating origin or um, derivation from from French it and directly from Latin ita from Greek itis word forming element making adjectives and nouns meaning connecting with or belonging to especially used in classical terms to form ethnic and local designations for example in Septuagint translations of Hebrew names in I and for names of um, gems and minerals. See, so it means belonging to. All right, uh, uh, often in in classical times used as a form of ethnic and local designations. So your ethnicity. So if you're an Israelite, you you your ethnicity meaning what you're you you belong to Israel or you 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 are connected to the nation of Israel or you your descent from Israel. Okay, so if you're an Edomite, what you you belong to Edom, you belong to that nation. Okay, or that people. So here we're reading, it says, what? Son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, meaning Hamadatha, belongs or was a people or descendant of Agag. And if Haman, all right, was, was the son of Hamadatha, that means what? That means what? Haman was also an Agagite, all right? So Haman would say what? Uh, I am Haman, son of Hamadatha, son of Agag. Now, what do we know about Agag? Agag was an Amalekite. He was the king of the Amalekites. So if you're an Agagite, that means you're a descendant of Agag. And Agag was a descendant of uh, of Amalek, who was a descendant of Esau. So now we know that what? Haman, all right, was what? He was an Edomite. But there's more to this. Now we're going to jump in here into the Apocrypha real quick. All right. And see, we're in Esther here. Now notice what they did was that they took out certain uh, uh, portions of, Okay, from the book of Esther. If you buy the physical copy of the Apocrypha and you go to editions of Esther or the rest of Esther, there are certain parts in there in the chapter before you read it, it will tell you this is supposed to go in this part. All right, like let's say you read, let's say you read uh, Esther chapter three, it'll tell you that this 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 port this part you're about to read should be inserted after Esther chapter three verse three. You see, so when you re when you reach Esther chapter three. Verse three. This is just an example. When you hit, when you finish verse three, you go into the apocrypha, read that chapter, because that's really what's supposed to be continuing after verse three, and then you come back and read verse four. Why? Because they took it out. Now we're going to show you why they took out these books from the original Bible, okay? Because they were really trying to hide certain information. So now we're going to the editions of Esther. All right, this is chapter sixteen. All right, now. Mind you, like I said before, the editions of Esther and the book of Esther is all one. They're supposed to be together. All right. So this is uh, editions of Esther in the Apocrypha, chapter 16, verse 10. It says, for, for Ammon, all right, 
a Macedonian. Now, um, the apocrypha is in Greek, so it's it's uh, 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 the words you see will be Greek transliterations. All right, of the words that you read in the regular Bible. Notice how it says here in the great king Artaxerxes. That is a Greek trans transliteration for Ahasuerus. Okay, so it doesn't mean it's a different person. It's just the, the Greek transliteration. All right, like it'll talk, it'll call um, Jeremiah, Jeremy, okay, or I, Isaiah, Isaiah, or Isaiah, you know, Elijah, Elias. Okay, Th those are all Greek transliterations. So it says here for Amon, and this Amon is talking about a uh, Haman or Haman, like we read here in the book of Esther, the descendant of Agag. A Macedonian, okay? So Haman was a Macedonian, all right? The son of Amadatha, like we read here, Hamadatha, but the Greek transliteration is Amadatha, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood, meaning by nationality, he wasn't an, a Persian. And the Persians go back to Elam, all right? They're Elamites. Haman was not an Elamite, because as we read, he was what? He was an Agagite. But it says here he was a Macedonian. Okay, so let's keep reading. It says, indeed, a stranger from the Persian blood and and far distant from our goodness and a, and as a stranger received of us. So now we know that Haman was a Macedonian, okay, who was a descendant from Agag. So what does that tell us about the Macedonians? That they are what? They are Edomites. Okay, now we're going to prove that some more. So keep in mind Haman being a Macedonian, right? Cool. Now we're going to jump here. This is 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. And it happened that after that, Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and the Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. This, Alex, this uh, Alexander is talking about Alexander the Great, as you will, you will read about in history. All right. And when you look it up, he did defeat Darius the third. All right. King of the Persians. OK. And that's when he took over the, the, the Medo-Persian Empire. All right. When the Greeks took over. All right. Right around what? 334 B.C. ish. OK. But notice it says. OK. So and it says he was uh, from the land of Kittim, which would be modern day Cyprus. Right. So it says Alexander was a Macedonian. But who else was a Macedonian? Haman. OK. So that means that Alexander and Haman were of the same stock. They were the same people. They were both Macedonians. Okay? Because if Alexander is a Macedonian and Haman is a Macedonian, what does that tell you about Haman? Haman was an Amalekite who was an Edomite. That means Alexander was an Amalekite who was an Edomite. Okay? Now, we're going to find out who the Macedonians were. Okay? Okay? Because what was Alexander known for? Alexander the Greek. Okay? Because the Macedonians were Greeks. And we know that Greeks, the, the, the Greeks today are who? Caucasians, Edomites. All right? So this is Macedonians, Greeks. It says Macedonians uh, are a regional and historical population of ethnic Greeks inhabiting or originating from the Greek region of Macedonia. In northern Greece, which incorporates most of the ter uh, territories and the two capitals of the ancient kingdom of Macedonia. Today, the Ma uh, most Macedonians live in or around the regional capital city of Thessalonica and other cities and towns in Macedonia, Greece, while many have spread across Greece and in the diaspora. Okay, so if we were to put this all back together to tie it in, because I know it's a lot of jumping around and a lot of linking. OK, but we know that the Greeks, all right, who today are Edomites or so-called Caucasians, Greeks are, to put it plain, Greeks are so-called white people. When you think of the Greeks, that's who you think of. Now, don't get it twisted. You have Israelites, all right, even going back to um, the Spartans, OK, the Lacedaemonians, the uh, uh, the 300, OK, they were they were Israelites that were what? Living amongst those those Greeks thinking they were Greeks, because remember, Israel has been scattered throughout the whole earth. But nonetheless, the, the Macedonians are predominantly Greeks. We know the Greeks are Edomites or so-called white people, right? So now let's trace that back. If you have a Caucasian that goes back to the Greeks, 
and the Greeks go to Greeks are who Macedonians, right? So when you trace it back, who was a Macedonian? Alexander. Who else was a Macedonian? Haman. So that means what? Haman was a Greek. And in today's day would be what? A so-called white person or a Caucasian. But who does Haman go back to? Haman goes back to Agag. Who does Agag go back to? Agag goes back to Amalek. Uh, Amalek. All right. And the Amalekites are a tribe of the, Edom of the Edomites, the top tribe, actually. Just like in the nation of Israel, you have Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which are different tribes. And Judah is the head tribe. Amalek is the head tribe of the nation of Edom. Okay. So Amalek being the grandson of Esau, all right, if you're an Amalekite, you're an Edomite. If you're a Macedonian, you're an Edomite. All right. So you see how this all links up? Okay. So when we when we tell you that that because then if you say the Edomites are done away with, well, the Macedonians were Edomites. Okay. And the Macedonians were Greeks. And we know the descendants of the Greeks, we know they're walking around today. So why, if 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 Esau, if Edomites are done away with, why do we still have so-called Greeks? <laughs> Not even so-called. Why do we have them walking around now? You know. But it all links up. And the key, the key thing I want to mention too is that this is from the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha was removed. If you if you go and buy a a, a modern day standard King James version Bible, the Maccabees is not going to be in there. The editions of Esther is not going to be in there as well. OK, because these are certain books that they took out of the Bible. Now, let me actually hit it right here. KJV Apocrypha, which the word Apocrypha means hidden. Oh, oh, beautiful. Let's read this. All right. Let's, let's see what it says here. I haven't read this. The Apocrypha is a selection of books which were published in the original 1611 King James Bible. See, and the regular Bible you have now is not in there. These Apocryphal books were positioned between the Old and New Testament. It also contains maps and genealogies. The, 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 what we just do, wasn't that a genealogy, a genealogical connection? The Apocrypha was a part of the King James Version for 274 years until being removed in 1885 AD. Now you should ask yourself, why was it removed? A portion of these books were called Deuto, uh, Deuter, Deutero, Deuterocanonical books by some entities such as the Catholic Church. Let's look up Deutero, Deuterocanonical. All right, if a, if it's some, if it's canon, that means what? It's a it's it's a part of the original, is a continuation, or is a part of the original. But let's see, Deutero, Deuterocanonical, if I'm pronouncing that right, of sacred books or literary works forming a secondary canon. All right. So we know that what these books are sacred, as it just mentioned, because it has a lot of good information in there. But where was I? Where was I here? OK, good. It says um, many claim that the Apocrypha should never have been included in the first place, raising doubt about its validity, uh, its validity and believing it was not God inspired. For instance, the reference about magic seems inconsistent with the rest of the book. Tobit, chapter six, verse five and eight. Others believe it is valid and that it should never have been removed, that it was considered part of the Bible for nearly 2000 years before it was recently removed a little more than 100 years ago. That's right. Some say it was removed because of not finding the books of the original Hebrew manuscripts. Others claimed it wasn't removed by the church, but by printers to cut costs in distributing Bibles in the United States. That's BS. Um. It says both both sides both sides tend to cite the same verses that warn against adding or subtracting from the Bible, Revelation twenty two and eighteen. Check this out: the word apocrypha means hidden. Woo! Now, if you're trying to hide something, why is that? If it's the truth, then you're not gonna try to hide it. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't hide the truth, but if you're trying to tell a lie, that's when you need to hide things. Hmm. Because in order to tell a lie, you have to know the truth. But in order to, to succeed in making somebody else believe the lie, you have to hide the truth. Fragments of Dead Sea Scrolls dating back to before 70 AD contained parts of the Apocrypha in uh, books in Hebrew, including Sirach and Tobit. Hmm. There's some good stuff. <laughs> 
It says, keep this in mind when reading the following apocryphal books. All right. Oh, look at this. Yo, boy, man. And these are the books. First, second, Esdras. All right. Which uh, Tobit, Judith, additions to F. Look, they took out all these books, man. There's a reason. Because if, the, if, if in order for them to, to, to uh, tell that lie that they have, guess what? They can't have information like this dating back to Alexander. All right. Connecting it with, with Haman, connecting him to the Edomites. They can't have that information coming out. See? Pursuant to Job 9 and 24, they're trying to cover up the faces of the judges. All right. They're trying to tell this lie. But hey, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, we're bringing out the truth, man. You know? So I'm going to end it here. Lord's will, this is edifying unto the elect. Hey, man, the Lord, like the Lord said, knowledge shall be increased in the last days. All right. And this is where you're going to get the knowledge, man, from the true men of the Lord. Pursuant to Amos 3 and uh, 3 and 7, the Lord reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets, man. All right. So with that, I hope this was edifying unto the elect. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechak Wadash. Until next time, Shalom.